Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First off, I want to say that I'm very honored to be invited as a judge to this very exciting and meaningful event. And I'm also impressed and inspired by the performance of today's contestants. Okay, what do we mean by, what do I mean by impressed? Impressed because of the quality of speeches that I heard throughout this morning's speeches. And then inspired, uh, I'm inspired by the great ideas presented in your speeches addressing the issues and questions assigned to you. So, in my opinion, you are all winners. Yes. <laughs> you should be proud of yourselves, okay? Well, but if you don't get selected to go to the final round, don't feel bad. They only have six prizes to give out, okay? It's their problem, not your problem. <laughs> okay, and I would also like to give you some advice on how to improve on um, making your speeches more effective, okay? I would like to mention two points, mainly. First, our delivery skills, okay? Delivery includes eye contact, our facial expressions, gestures, posture, and movement on stage. I think it's very important, and you all understand why they are important, because they show how speakers say something in addition to what they say something, right? What they, they're saying, okay? So if we use these skills properly, then our ideas can be more expressed, can be more clearly expressed, okay? However, if we use them too much at the wrong time, and when it doesn't go with the content of your speech, then they can be distracting as well as confusing sometimes. Take gestures, for example. Uh, we judges noticed that some of the teams actually use too many <laughs> gestures, okay? We need them, we need them. But we don't need them for every word in every sentence, okay? So that will be attracting your audience attention to your gesture, but not focusing on what you're saying, okay? So I think this is one point that I want to remind you if you have a chance to participate in this kind of an event again, okay? And the second point I want to mention is to connect yourself to your topic. What do I mean by connecting yourself to your topic? I mean, when you want to share your ideas with an audience, you want to truly care about, understand, and believe in what you're talking about. Only by doing so can your emotions be properly expressed through your words, okay? According to Aristotle, okay, three, elements of making a su successful speech, okay? One of them is pathos, emotions. Emotions is actually the strongest tool to help us to change people's mind and attitude about something. So if you connect yourself to your ideas, you really know what you're talking about, then your speech will become powerful and persuasive. And this will also help you not to be overcome by stage fright. Uh, you notice that this morning, some of the participants were so nervous that they forgot their words, right? <laughs> okay. If you really know what you're going to talk about, if you, you internalize ideas that you want to share, then even when you forget the exact wording, you should be able to still convey your ideas to your audience in a different way then you can avoid the awkwardness of standing here on stage and not knowing what to do, okay? So, to sum up, two points, right, <laughs> okay? Uh, using proper delivery skills and connecting yourself to, uh, to your ideas, to your topic, will help you become effective speakers in the future. Thank you. Good afternoon, judges, teachers, and all the students. It's so nice to see you. 
How are you doing today? Great. Great. Okay, I want you to do this with me. So I want you to raise your right hand. Come on, everybody. Raise your right hand and put your right hand on your left shoulder and say goodbye, Chip. And not goodbye. Good job, Jimmy. Come on. Good job. Yeah, maybe, maybe later you will say goodbye, Jimmy. That's okay. Okay, but just remember one thing, when you are here, you attend this competition, you win, you lose, whatever, you win. So, you know, this is Professor Zhuo, when she mentioned this is a kind of win-win situation, everybody wins. However, I really like to talk about something you have to keep in mind. Whenever you deliver a speech, right, what is a good speech? So, I'm going to tell you something you really have to know. You know, I'm going to give you some points about what, about what is a good speech. And the second one, I want to say a few words of encouragement to you. Okay, uh, you know, I don't know. Every morning when you get up, you stand in front of the mirror. Who do you see? Who do you see? Your That's good. That's good. You know, you were here last year, right? <laughs> you see your competition. So every morning, you know, you see yourself as your competition. When you go home tonight, you will tell yourself, hey, you know, today, you know, I have gained a lot. I have learned a lot. And then I am better now, okay? So you have to have this kind of what? learning spirit. You have to have this kind of passion. So, you know, sometimes when you just want to deliver speech, right? So a lot of you this morning when you were here, Actually, whenever you deliver this kind of speech, you have to ask yourself one question. If the person talking to me, right, is he really talking to me? Is it speech? What is speech? A good speech is a conversation with passion. You know, I, say, I want to tell you that, hey, you know, come to Taiwan. You are my friend. I am going to show you all the beauty, all the technology, all the great achievement of Taiwan. We want to show you new Taiwan is a friendly country. You know what I'm saying? When you just show this kind of passion, people will feel different. Rob Emerson, Rob Waldo Emerson, he used to say, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. So if you just want to have the passion, you deliver the speech in an organized way, and the whole thing will be very different. And then some of you, when you were delivering your speech, right, sometimes you look at the ceiling, you look at nothing. We do not really feel the contact. Whenever you communicate with people, you want people to listen to you, to put their focus on you, and things will be very different. So always remember, you always have to have the passion. You, also, you always have to have this kind of organization. So whenever you introduce a speech, right, in your introduction, did you talk about what you want to talk about? Do you give people the preview? Oh, you know, here we are going to talk about three points, right? One, modern, you know, actually modernization. Two, technology. Three, scenic spot or something, right? You give people the preview so that people will understand. Well, these are what we are going to have in your talk, right? And then when you finish your talk, and then you summarize. These are the things we mentioned. So we hope that one day you can join us to fulfill our dream to just want to do something together. So you want to call people into your action. And that will be something. And then I am very glad a lot of teams, they were using a lot of good quotations from famous people and good story from their personal life. And also good stories about what? Some other actually events in the world. You know, whenever you are using this kind of what, this kind of example, people will be impressed. Don't tell me a lot of theory. Don't tell me a lot of propaganda. We don't need that. Okay, and then, you know, whenever you show people your gesture, right? So some, some of the team, and then we say, oh, you know, Jimmy? And then, Tony? Okay, it's not necessary. You understand? Know Try to make it very conversational. Make it what? Very natural. But I do believe you all did a very good job, even when you forgot. Now I forgot what I have to say. <laughs> but when you really forget something, what do you do? If you recite, you cannot remember. But if you understand your point, you really understand the topic, right? Even when you forget, you will say, hey, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I forgot some point, but there's one thing you shouldn't forget. It's very important for us to open up ourselves, to have this kind of international vision, to go out, to step out of the, our comfort zone to join the world, to change the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. 
as Gandhi said. So every one of you, you are promising. I see the future in you. I feel so glad. I'd like to just tell you a story about Michelangelo. Anyone knows Michelangelo? A great artist, actually, in Italy. And then, actually, you know, when he was 30-something, he created David. You know David, right? OK. That was a kind of statue which was about, like, what, five meters tall. And when he finished the carving of David, everybody would say, say, wow, you know, how could you do this kind of thing? This is not really something that human beings can do, right? You just made this kind of uh, great carving. How did you do it? And he said, well, I don't know. I just went to the quarry, and I saw a piece of large marble, and I saw David inside. The only thing I did was to chip off the excess. The only thing I did was to chip out the excess. So all of you, if you tell yourself, you know, from now on, every day, I'm going to chip out some of the excess, little by little, you are going to be David, the king, in a very, very special place. And another one, the last point I want to tell you is still about Michelangelo. You know, Michelangelo lived what? To his 89. When he was 72 years old, he was assigned to be the chief architect of St. Peter Basilica, St. Peter Church. If you go to Italy, you will see, you know, this marvelous piece of uh, church, right? Okay. He was in charge of the Basilica for 18 years. His job was to embellish, decorate, the church to be the glorious place, basically, in the world for the Pope. And then, you know, after he worked there for like 18 years, he was about to die. At that time, he was almost blind. He couldn't really see. And then he asked his disciple, his student, to take him to the church. And then he was blind. He was feeling, he was touching all the statue, you know. I'm afraid I might fall. <laughs> he was touching all the statue. And then he just would touch all the painting, all the masterpieces. And then after that, he said one sentence, three words. Guess. What are the three words? I'm going to die. Just do it? No, that's Nike. OK, no. He said. I still learn. I still learn. Always remember, life is a process. Life is a fighting for your territory. If you start fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take place. You just have to remember, you always have to learn. Learn to be great. Learn to be full of knowledge and wisdom so that one day you can really contribute. And then maybe one day, when you recall the speech from Martin Luther King, right? He said, I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. But for you, don't just copy the words. When he said, I have a dream, right? Maybe next time, when you make your own speech, right? Instead of saying, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream, you say, not only do I have a dream, I do have a plan. I do have an action. Congratulations to all of you for your participation, because no matter what you did, it was a success. If you know how to use this experience to be the stepping stone for your future advancement. Thank you very much. Thank you. <音樂>這個選拔沒有輸贏趕來就是贏不支持就是贏趕來就是贏北區比賽優良的學校那選十名那這些序號跟成績都沒有關聯
，这句话，你到十年、二十年之后，你会很深刻的体会。你今天敢来参加，你已经胜过太多太多的人了。好，序号四十一啊，这是优良比赛名名单哈，优良学校序号四十一。天主教崇光学校财团法人新北市崇光女子高级中学，四十号，复旦学校财团法人桃园市复旦高级中等学校，再来序号二十五，台北市私立竹林高级中学。序号二十四，慈修学校财团法人新北市私立慈修高级中学。序号二十二号，启英学校财团法人桃园市启英高级中等学校。序号十九，台北市立景美女子高级中学。序号十七，慈济学校财团法人慈济大学附属高级中学。这是花莲来的吗？哎，花莲来的，大家掌声再次鼓励一下。再来，序号十六号，国立金门高级中学，有没有在场？金门高中有没有在场？大家起立一下，我们报以热烈的掌声，致敬。再来，好，捕捉了，捕捉了，好，十五号。南山学校财团法人新北市南山高级中学，还有一个呃优良学校是序号四，新北市立树林高级中学，顺，接着继续嘛，好。接着我们要公布的是，呃，比赛优胜的六名入围学校哈，一样哈，序号跟名次是无关的哈。序号三十一，台北市私立复兴实验高级中学。好，再来，二序号二十七号。台北市立成功高级中学。哦，这是努力辛苦出来的代价哈。然后再来，序号二十六，台北市立第一女子高级中学。再来。序号十八，台北市私立维格高级中学。好，再来，序号第五号，国立武林高级中学。好，很好。那个，我们再掌声也谢谢武林高中举办这么好，帮我们办这么好的场地，再感谢一次。好，最后一名这个呃进不是最后一名哈，最后一个进入这个呃入围学校的是序号三国立政治大学附属高级中学。好，好，那么非常感谢哈，大家踊跃参与外交小尖兵的选拔。
，呃，这六名学校会呃加入，呃会呃进入我们的这个决赛。那在这里哈，在这里我们特别要在呃感谢大家辛苦的参与，请各位同学用最热烈的掌声跟你们的老师道谢，谢谢老师。还有，我们要特别谢谢公共电视台帮我们办了这么好的这个比赛，我们再谢谢他们一次。再复习一下刚刚我讲的十个字，没有字词，只有这十个字：选拔没输赢，敢来你就赢，明年再来。